And Chicago, any- Wisconsin, uh, about 18 minutes from my parking spot at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh uh-uh. uh. So we're just we're 15 miles south of Green Bay, Wisconsin. We're about three hours north of Chicago. Wow. And uh, I was born. I moved to Kakana when I was uh, six years old um, with my mom and dad and my wife, Lisa, my son, Dallas, Cody, and I, and my mother. They're still alive, and we all still reside in Kakana here. Well, that is. That's wild. So just outside of Green Bay, man, that is that's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool thing. Now, I do want to pass along to folks that are listening in. If you're noticing some uh, cut in and out, I notice that I'm having some internet issues, and I do apologize for this live stream. That is one of the things that we are going to be working on as we uh, amp up uh, Quad Radio. But we are recording tonight, and we will have the uh, replay up in a little bit. So anything that you do miss, uh, you will be able to catch at a later time. So uh, don't worry about that. Uh, we'll have that back up and rolling for you, so I do want to let folks know that. So, you're out of Kakana, Wisconsin. Now, tell me a little bit about Kakana, Wisconsin and the ATV scene. How does a young man out of Kakana, Wisconsin get into ATV racing or ATVs, period? I started at, uh, after I got out of college, I had a couple other jobs. I was a manager of a Best Buy and I went to a Yamaha dealership, and uh, I was a sales manager at a Yamaha dealership, and I bought a Banshee in 1988 and started racing in 1989. And I started racing. Things went well. I was a successful PT flat track racer. Um, I have 20, over 20 amateur state district championships myself wow and uh what happened is uh i was flat track racing and there was a motocross race going on it and cody was a pretty good little flat tracker himself and he walked over to the fence and he was watching the quads on the motocross track and he said hey dad i want to do that and i said oh <laughs> i don't know anything about it <laughs> and i did so oh, we ended up taking his uh, little Eton that he was racing at the time and put some motocross tires on it, and I think we bought our first set of Alpha shocks. And uh, two weeks later, he was sir. I really Joel Jansen wasn't the future of Jansen Motorsports that Cody Jansen was, and I kind of pulled back the reins a little bit on my flat tracking and PT and. and now we've turned it over to Cody, and he's obviously the future of the sport for for Jansen Motorsports and our family, obviously. Wow. Wow. That's that's a pretty interesting little story. I mean, the first time that, uh, that, that you guys went out, I mean, were you expecting what you, what you saw? I mean, were you surprised? Were you happy? I mean, what kind of emotions were going through your mind? Because here you are. Uh, uh, probably, uh, uh, like like you say, all these championships and titles, you got a pretty superb uh, TT flat tracker guy out there, and here you got your son wanting to go uh, a, di- a little different direction than what you are. It was it was very interesting to me the first year on the on the CVT um, was a that was a little difficult because I wasn't familiar with these uh, highly tuned CVTs. The second year when he got to a 90 mod and we put him on a blaster chassis with a, with a YZ85 motor in it, we went out to the track. The track owner, it's Gravity Park. It's a close track. And we went out to practice, and we practiced on days sometimes when there wasn't other people there. He'd come around the corner and hit a jump 30 or 40 feet that I told people I didn't want to jump anything higher than a curb. And he was hit, and he, it didn't take him long, I would say one year from the time he, he switched to motocross, that he went from middle of the pack to a contender in, within one season. That's pretty impressive. I mean, was was, I mean, I'm sure you were excited about it, but I mean, were you expecting anything like that? Well, um, 
it might be it might sound a little uh, conceited, but we don't go there unless we plan on winning. And <laughs> he and he's a he's we're competitive. Him and I are competitive. Our family's always been competitive. It doesn't matter if it's racing up the basement steps or racing our trucks to the shop from our house, which is a mile race. One way or the other, or either one of us trying to beat each other. So <laughs> I'm not. I wasn't surprised. No, no. He did a good job. That that's great. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, Jansen Motorsports. Now is that something that you had going on back when you did the the uh, flat tracking? Because you 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 like. I mean, whenever you kind of put it all into the future of Jansen Motorsports was now Cody, not Joel. So obviously, this is something that you have been doing for quite some time. Yeah, we've owned Jansen Motorsports for eighteen years. We've had it for eighteen years. Um, and it, it started here, uh, after I left the Yamaha dealership, I started my own shop out of my garage. Then we rented a building and I think in 2006 is when we built our new, our new 7,000 square foot facility that we're in now. I still Whoa. call it new cause it's, you know, it's a beautiful place. We built that, uh, in 2006, and that's where we, we still are today. Now, what do you do out of there? I mean, what uh, are you parts, accessories, apparel, or are you just motor work? I mean, what is Jansen Motorsports? Um, Jansen Motorsports is initially parts and repair specialists. So we sell, we sell lots of parts, and we do repairs. Years ago, we did a lot more with motorcycles and such, but now our business has evolved to doing basically suspension components and engines, and then we also have a utility division um, where Scott and Matt, who work for me, take care of the utility division as well as work in the in the high performance part. But so we do utility machines. Everybody's getting ready for deer hunting right now, so we do the utility stuff. Um, we'll sell plows and, and, and such, but our business has evolved from selling motorcycles and mopeds and stuff back in the day to now the place is just packed with coolers and engines and shocks and suspension components. That basically is what we do. We do engines and chassis. Sounds and like, and we do, and, and then we have a full, a full parts department that will sell motorcycle tires, ATV tires, you know, we have a nice showroom and, you know, so it's kind of, we call our parts self parts and repair specialists, but the biggest portion of our business is just ATV suspension and ATV uh, engines. It's very rare to see a motorcycle in our shop any time of the year. Well, are you, are you like, what, do you guys do any work over the web or is it all local based business that you work with? Um, we sell parts and accessories on eBay. We have, you know, we have we have eBay auctions going all the time. But the majority of the stuff that we do will either be local stuff with uh, Matt Rose, Sam Rose's dad, Matt Rowe originally when they started coming to us, and then Jeff Tebon, who was a great supporter of Jansen Motorsports and Gunner. Those people come, but the majority of our work is either freighted in, an ATV complete gets freighted to us, and we'll build it from scratch. We had one go out yesterday on a semi. They freight a whole ATV in. They'll freight engines in all the time, and then in turn, we're UPS and Alpha Shocks, Jansen A-Arms, Jansen Swing Arms, Jansen Steering Stems, you know, all of our own private label stuff. Wow. Out. I did not know that. I didn't. I did not realize that uh, you guys were into all that. So, uh, I guess, hey, that that explains a lot then. <laughs> In all, <honesty. laughs> so uh, that, that's great, man. I mean, so well. I mean, say if somebody's listening and they want to find out a little bit more about you, how did they find out more about Jansen Motorsports? They can hit me on Twitter. They can get me on Facebook. They can go on JansenMotorsports.com. I'm just all they gotta do is call and ask for Joel, and 
to be honest with you, I'm on the phone, it seems like, about 8 or 10 hours a day, so I try to get to work early and get my paperwork done, and I'm either on the phone or I'm in the back helping the guys. I'm more of a suspension guy, and Todd Blum is the head of our R&D department. He's also Cody's head and mechanic during the season. And then we have Scott and Matt um, working. We have uh, Dan Binder, who basically puts chassis together. He's our chassis assembler. He does Cody's work. And then uh, myself and Stefan Propson are uh, the chassis specialists at our shop. Wow. So we got a pretty busy we got a pretty busy deal going right now. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. I'm I'm happy for you too. And how's the economy treating you guys out there? I mean, are you, are you seeing a lot of uh work even though the economy I mean, is it starting to pick up for you with the economy the way that it has been and everything? Fortunately we've been in the races this year and you've been you've been there too and <laughs> to do the sport that to do the sport that we're in, you don't have uh, most of the people don't have a nine to five nine to five job, so it hasn't hit us as hard because you got This takes a lot of money to do, so we're, we're using people that have a higher means mean income than most. So right. it hasn't hit us as hard with our race engines and suspensions with the local stuff. It's hurt our local race series um, and our local racing. The numbers of ATVs and bikes are down. But I think that's just the economy hurting the young guy who's trying to go out racing, and it's it's expensive. It's a very expensive sport. It is. It is that. Now, being an old flat tracker, an old tt -er, and I don't mean that in any disrespect because you're not really old, but... Um, did you ever get a chance to race race against the guy, likes of guys like uh, Tim Farr and uh, Harold Goodman and uh, uh, shoot, I think even Jeremiah Jones didn't he used to do TT back in the day and, and all those guys. Harold, Harold did T, Harold did TT and uh, and motocross back in the day when it was motocross and TT. They competed. Uh, you know, half the season was TT, half the season was motocross. I did when. The extreme dirt track out of the state of Wisconsin was, I went to Astabula, to Pine, Ra uh, Pine Lake, race there. Uh, I didn't race in the pro class. I'd race in the pro-am class. So I, I got, to, got the chance to watch those pros race, but never really banged bars with them, except at a couple of local races in South Dakota, um, a couple of them in southern Wisconsin, where some of the some of the guys would come, so I had a chance to to race with them, but uh, I wasn't uh, I wasn't a pro speed in Wisconsin. You might have called me a pro, but when it, when I came down to it, I wasn't. Uh, I was maybe one step below. Maybe I was a pro am racer, and and those guys were the pros, so I was one step below that. So so we can't sit here and talk trash then, right? No, I can. I, I can tell you one thing. Kenny Marco, uh, the quad father who's raced for many, many, many years and won lots and lots of national championships and the little plug using Jansen engines, I beat him a lot of times. <laughs> 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 so I guess if I'd have followed Kenny's footsteps, I might have got a couple of national championships. <laughs> there you go. The quad father. I think I've heard of that guy, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah, everybody knows Kenny. He's the quad father. Well, I guess so. <laughs> hey, how you doing? You want to race a quad? You got to go through me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, well, Joel, let's shift gears over here a little bit, and let's, let's start talking to, uh, to Cody now. And, I mean, ultimately, probably you didn't even realize it whenever it was going on, but you were uh, – Probably training this guy when he was still in diapers, and he was paying attention to every little move that you made, and it all soaked in, and, and, and nobody even realized it until uh, they were able to, to let him unleash the beast out there. And uh, uh, Cody, welcome to uh, Quad Radio, man. Good, uh, good to have you on. Yeah, yeah, it's 
It's nice to be here. Last time I talked to you, I was on the plug in Alvarado, so you're bringing back good memories for me. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad that uh, that talking with me brings back good memories for you. So, yeah, that's right. You were on the podium at Loretta's, and, uh, I mean, you know, taking a, a look at it, we'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes, but, I mean, that that's a good way to uh, end the season, kind of put a little bit of an explanation point on the season. You had a good season. You had a good finish at the end of the season. And uh, the, the way this all chronologies, it's the way it all works, I guess, historically, you know, your dad kind of laid the groundwork there, you know, talking about your TT days and stuff. Tell me a little bit about that from your perspective, man. I mean, what was it like? Tell me about your first memories of racing and riding and and, and all the things that uh, that brought you to where you are now. Well, obviously, uh, you know, with my dad being, a, you know, a local pro and everything, and, you know, everyone wanted to be like him around me, so, you know, and obviously your dad is always, you know, like Superman, so that just added to it. And, uh, you know, I saw him, you know, doing great things. And he was always, you know, it's crazy because he was uh, like a, uh, you know, like I said, a local pro or whatever. But, you know, he acted a lot bigger. You know, he wasn't trying to look flashy and stuff. He was always the guy that would, you know, give a little kid, a, you know, the hat that he had on or some gloves or you know, a ride on the victory lap with, uh, you know, the checkered flag or whatever it was. And, uh, you know, I think that kind of, you know, made me who I am today. But anyways, uh, yeah, I, I, I still to this day love TT and flat track. Um, you know, I started out on my Dimly and my automatic and uh, rode that for a while. And then actually in the state of Wisconsin, they, they stopped having um, mini quad races. They, like, outlawed it. So I had to race dirt bikes for a little while. And uh, that's kind of where the, that gray area was when uh, I decided to go do the motocross thing and, and uh, you know, go that direction with my, uh, my career now, but my, my hobby at the time. Wow. So how long did you race the two wheels? Um, I, I raced them just dirt bikes. I raced for probably a year and a half, but there was... Rick, weren't you quite an aspiring the guys that were The, the thought in our heads, you know, that we kind of had the speed to, you know, do something with it. And um, the next year, that was when WTSA was around. So uh, that kind of tells you how long that was, how long ago that was. But um, 2007, I showed up on the 300, and uh, me, Jeffrey Restrelli, Mark Maddell, um, Jason Connell, Neil McGrath, uh, you know, the four or five of us battled it out for that championship. And, uh, and I ended up winning that, and uh, you know I kind of set the groundwork for my career. And um, so I was a 2007 WPSA 300 EX national champion. And then the next couple of years, I you know, we just didn't have the funding or the backing to go to all the races. And uh, in 2008, I showed up at three races and uh, raced two classes at each of them, and ended up winning uh, four of the six classes. I was racing eight classes at the time. And I uh, went to two races in 2009, won both of those. And uh, 2010, I got hurt. 2011, I showed up at two races, won both of those in the A class. And uh, finally this year, um, kind of got the sponsors and got enough backing to be able to go to the races. And 
trying to make a count, you know, as a as a rookie in the pro am class. For sure, and and you did it did do just that. And, and what's really neat, I'm going to tell you. I mean, you really came on the radar for me, probably uh, in 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 eleven, whenever uh, I think it was Redbud. For some reason, Redbud sticks out to me more than any of the races. And and to me, I remember it. It seemed to, to be some. I I remember doing the interview, and it seemed to be somewhat of an emotional win for you. To be up there on the podium, it it was rather a um, like a like a milestone. I mean, you come to the nationals again and conquered again, and you seen. I remember in your 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 podium speech, you talked about how you'd wanted nothing more than to be able to come back and ride the nationals next year, and that's what you were working on, and you hoped that you were and you thought that you were going to have a program put together, and that was the whole idea. And, and lo and behold, boom, there you are. I mean. Go back to Red, but do you remember what I'm talking about, the incident that I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I'll never forget that day. Um, I showed up at Walnut that spring, and as you know, in Wisconsin, in the, the winter and spring, you obviously can't ride. So it was May, and I had only rode like once or twice, and I went to Walnut, and I got my butt kicked. And uh, I had a couple months, you know, there to kind of soul-searching, put in my work, you know, and I knew that if I wanted to, to do something in 2012, I needed to make it count because I was falling off the radar. You know, I was only 18 years old, but, you know, I, you know, you can only do this sport for so long, and I didn't want to miss my miss my prime because you know, this is all I wanted to do for since I was a little kid. So um, I put everything I had into training for Redbud, and I ended up, Went in uh, production A, won 16-24, and uh, finished right outside the top three in my Pro-Am debut and uh, finished fourth in Pro-Am Unlimited, never having raced Pro-Am ever before. And um, I just tried, to, tried to, to put my emotions on my sleeve and pour it out to everybody and hope that if... Uh, you know, someone special got, you know, to see what I was like and see how hard I was willing to work and um, how how I would, you know, try to give back and do whatever I could do to get to the races in 2012. And uh, it, it worked out for me. God definitely, definitely blessed me that day and, you know, throughout uh, all 2012 and really all my racing career up to this point. Amen. Amen on that, man. I mean, I, I'm not going to take that away from you a bit. I know, you know, taking a look at your results from this uh, 2012 season, you know, the first race, I think, where was we at? In Georgia this year. Uh, results there in the yep. Pro-Am Unlimited class. Uh, you got like a 16th overall, I think, in in the Pro-Am Unlimited class. And then in the uh, Pro-Am Production class. Um, see, so looking at the results here. Wow, you're a little further down, a lot further down in the uh, pro am uh, production than you were the uh, the uh, the other. But uh, I mean, obviously, it looked like a little uh, kind of a rough start there that first time out for you in uh, in, in Georgia this year. Yeah, I uh, I definitely felt like I had to put in my work. Um, obviously, you actually got fourth. You know, that's uh, let me. Yeah, I, I'm just yeah. looking. You got 13th for the season. Obviously, that one was uh, kind of like a throwaway class for you in, in a sense. But you got fourth there in the pro am uh, in the pro am production class, and you and you got 16th in pro am unlimited. So let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, that was a kind of a bittersweet day for you in a way. Right. You know, it definitely could have been worse. It could have been better. Um, I like I said I, I came into the season you know thinking that I was doing pretty well and I still think that I was but um, in the first moto and unlimited I ended up crashing and coming back to third or fourth I think and then in the second moto I was in second behind Gibson and we had an electrical problem and I lost spark so that cost me a podium that day and then uh, on Sunday I remember the very first time qualifying session of the year I was top qualifier so that was pretty awesome. And uh, I don't. I had a. I did have a very good first moto, and then the second moto, I was in third almost the whole race. And then uh, 
my boy Ronnie Higgerson passed me at the very end, and I got fourth overall. So, but for my very first prime production race, you know, the, the length was a little tough for me at the beginning, mentally more than anything, just because, you know, these guys have done it for so long. You look at the top guys that have been there for, you know, four, three, four, five years or whatever, and, um, you know, yeah, but overall it was, it was good. I definitely couldn't complain. I was happy after the, after the first race, for sure. And then, and I'm sure you got pretty happy after that, too. I mean, the season, uh, you had your ups and downs, so to speak. Um, more downs in the Pro-Am production class, but uh, more ups in the Pro-Am Unlimited class. Uh, taking a look at that, you got, you know, you, you had a couple of uh, not-so-good finishes after that in round three and in uh, a little later in the season. But the rest of those were good, solid, uh, either near the podium or on the podium uh, type finishes for you, which uh, netted you. What would you get, third place in the Pro-Am Unlimited class this year? Yeah, yep, like a third overall in my rookie year. Wow, that that's pretty impressive stuff there. So take us through the rest of the year. So so there you go. You're at the uh, first round. It's like we say, you know, it's one that you can definitely walk out of there with your head held high, and uh, I'm sure your sponsors were pretty amped up and pretty pumped up for you too because uh, your name you got a got a lot of exposure that day. I remember announcing that ra- those races, and I remember uh, having to say your name several times throughout the uh, course of the race because uh, you were right there. You were in the thick of it. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember pulling off the track and uh, I remember pulling off the track after time qualifying, having to say, "Believe the hype." Cody Jansen's in the house, so I'll never forget that. You uh, <laughs> definitely made me feel good there. But um, I, yeah, the, the rest of the races were good. The, the second, um, the second race of the year was my first podium ever in pro am, and uh, I podiumed half of the races this year in pro am unlimited. And I just want to, you know, make it known that you know some people I think were using it as a knock on me that. You know, my fitness wasn't there or, or something for program production, and that, you know, that definitely wasn't the case. It just, however, it worked out with a couple little, uh, you know, a couple little fluke things and stuff. Um, you know, but if you look at my lap times, they were always there. And by the end of the year, I think I, I really believe that we had it figured out. At Red Bud, I finished next to last in both my program and or production models and uh, ended up going. Five four, I think, and was still making moves at the end of races, and um, finished in the top five there. And then um, at Loretta's, I uh, ended up um, on the podium, like we said earlier, in uh, in Pro Am Unlimited, making a, a pass to make the podium in the very last corner, which was probably the highlight of my career. <laughs> but uh, on on Sunday, I I was in second place behind Gibson and uh you know with a ton of good fast guys behind me when the two lap board came up out and uh you know in my in my something went south with my bike so um I, I just think that that proves that you know no one can get down on my fitness or on our machine or anything because Gibson's a pro and you know I was holding my own against him in second place with a lap and a half to go, you know, so I think, you know, really, I think the sky's the limit, you know, when you think about the last couple of rounds and the flashes of brilliance that we had, you know, this last year, um, you know, like I said, I really think the sky's the limit because uh, as far as a, as a rookie, um, having only been to two tracks on the circuit was coming into this year, I had only been to Walnut and Redbud, I'd never been to any of the other tracks before. And, uh, you know, I'm younger than most of the guys in the program class, maybe a little less experienced, and just kind of wasn't going to, you know, make an excuse for anything and just try to go bump elbows with those guys. You did an excellent job, there's no doubt. So what does uh, 2013 hold for you? Already Dad's kind of mentioned that uh, you're going to be part of a a two-man team and you're going to be one of the premier riders of that two-man team. You, I think he said, what, Troy Hill, I think, is the other guy you're going to be riding with? Yes, sir. So 
obviously you, you've got that dialed in. So what does between now and round one, whenever that is, and I will tell you the schedule is getting closer to being posted. Um, I know they, they're doing some revisions and stuff right now, and they just posted the GNCC schedule, so the ATV MX schedule shouldn't be too far behind that. But um, what, what, what are you anticipating uh, the next few months to be for you like? Uh, yeah, like like Dad said, we're uh, I'm gonna be part of a two man team. Um, it's gonna be uh, the FSI, which is the Hill family and Jansen Motorsports, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be me and Troy, and just uh, gonna be the two man tandem. And um, yeah, I'm confident about it. Um, I think I'm, uh, you know. Uh, just being around the season or around the series, I should say, at this level for one year, I'm definitely uh, surrounding myself with a uh, you know some better people, and uh, I think it, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be monumental. Um, I think one of the biggest highlights for me um, this season and kind of setting the stage is going to be uh, going to Florida and training with uh, with my guy Hamrick. Um, I think with, you know, the speed that he has and being that, you know, we're two pretty top level guys, I think that, uh, you know, it's going to be like we're at a national race almost every day and, uh, staying together, working out together, running together, eating together. It's just going to be, it's, I think it's invaluable, you know, trying to do it by yourself is, is hard enough and uh two guys two top level guys i just think we can push each other farther and farther and that's something that i didn't have in you know years past i didn't have it this year and uh you know i don't think you see that many top level guys training together so i think that we can definitely me and him both can use that to our advantage and uh and going back to the troy hill and the hill family i really look forward to working with him uh, I worked with him a little bit this year as he was on our was on our outlaws team this year, and uh, that's a guy that really came on strong at the end of the year too, uh, very similar to the way mine did. And I really think that uh, he's going to be a name that you're going to be announcing a lot this year because uh, that's a kid that's going to put in the work, and he's like a sponge. He'll listen to anything me or or my dad or or anybody tells him, and. I'm going to work my butt off as I am right now and try to get ready for the season and uh, not take any any weeks, any races, any laps off and uh, try to put my best foot forward as I always have and keep on pushing because um, my rookie year was good, but definitely looking for bigger and better things this year for sure. Well, that's good, man. That that's good. I, I love the optimism and the professionalism. And how, how old are you again? Eighteen. I'm I'm twenty now. Just you're, turned twenty. You're twenty now. I'm 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 impressed with the professionalism that you portray being out there, and, and especially not being on the national scene, man. I mean, your dad is really really groomed you very well there's no doubt about it now you know you you kind of answered one of my questions there i was going to ask you what the camaraderie was like with you and some of your peers as far as the uh, pro-am class is concerned because like a lot of these guys i guess the, you know some of these guys kind of new to it some of them grew up through the ranks and everything but i mean it's just kind of like a mix of all you guys i mean how, how did you fit in with the rest of the guys i mean there's there's a big mix of guys i mean you're talking guys like gibson moser uh sean taylor duck lloyd tyler hamrick who who you're referring to there who is uh uh, a great guy, Cole Henry, Cody Suggs, Brent Sellers, you know, Johnson, Henry, all those guys, man. I mean, Dalton Milliken. I mean, there's so many different personalities there. How's it all working out for you? Yeah, I, you know, it, it was almost a little intimidating at the beginning of the year because it's the guys that, you know, I kind of always watched and kept tabs on and saw at the races and, you know, watched the Pro-Am races, watched these guys race and, all of a sudden, I'm out there on the track with them, but it's kind of one of those things where, you know, I think there's more drama, there's more uh, 
he said, she said kind of stuff going on in the, in all the classes below us because when it gets to our level, you know, I think we all kind of respect the guys that we're racing against and the guys that we're around. And I know personally I have I don't have an issue with anybody on the racetrack. I mean, obviously I want to beat every single one of them, but then again, you know, I talk to every one of those guys and, you know, I just – I really think that I fit in pretty well, and, uh, you know, we all race hard, but for the most part, I think pretty much all of us race clean and know that what happens on the racetrack, you know, stays on the racetrack, and, you know, I know I'm not going to take anybody out purposely, and I think for the most part, that's, uh, you know, that's pretty much a two-way street, and, um, you know, I think... Anybody that's watched the program class sees how competitive it is, but it's really, uh, you know, it's really cool for me to be a part of it and be able to know that I'm still buddies with these guys at the end of the races and can, you know, talk to them about other things other than racing and just cool, you know, because at the beginning of the year I wasn't part of that group and by the end I was as part, you know, as much a part of the group as, as anybody I feel like. So that was really cool because I didn't know how. You know, I'm kind of a shy guy, so I didn't know how that was going to work out. And uh, you know, they kind of like welcomed me. It was pretty. It was pretty. Uh, pretty gratifying. That's nice. That's good to know that that is. And, and and talking with you, you wouldn't think you're a bashful guy, but I know where you're coming from. I'm the same way. People would say, "Oh, you're bashful. You're shy." But yeah. I really am, but uh, for somehow or another, I'm able to break through it and do what I do. But uh, uh, that's good that you've been able to uh, acquire those kinds of friendships and, and things like that, especially in that short amount of time. Now, the one question that I got, how, how tight are you and uh, Dalton Milliken? I, mean, I, don't, I don't, he's like the one guy I really don't know that well. Um I know the one thing, you know, knowing that I, or sorry, I don't know him that well, but the one thing that I know makes him cool is he is number 25, which yeah, obviously yeah. makes you cool. Yeah, that's that's exactly where I'm going, man. That's you, you see what I'm what, what I'm picking. <laughs> so we've we've got the 25, and we've got the 25 slash. And my question is, uh, the reason I ask how good of buddies you guys are, I mean, how are we going to get this whole 20 number 25 issue sorted out, man? Because I mean, you know, it, it can get a little bit confusing sometimes out there, you know, from an announcing standpoint. I'm sure. Well, the good thing that we're doing. Uh, uh, I guess transponder scoring or the com the scores would be all confused too. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. You know, I thought I was going to get it because it's my AMA number, mm -hmm. but uh, that didn't work out for me. So hopefully, I should have it in unlimited for sure because I got top three. So ah. Hopefully, we can hopefully we work that out because I'm kind of kind of tired of the flash. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Well, that's good. Well, there you go. I, I, I like how you, how you say that. So you, you probably carry a little more weight than what he does out there on the uh, the racetrack. How did he do in – did he even race the uh, Pro-Am uh, production class at all? Yeah, I think he raced it all year, but uh, – Yep, he got 11th there. Yeah. Okay, he got 11th there. So yeah. – I there you go. So how how are we going to decide that now? Because you got a higher number in one class, and but you did get third. You're right. So maybe your your third will carry more weight than what his uh, his position there is. I think it was eleventh in the uh, pro am uh, production class there. So <laughs> so maybe you guys will, will you know, figure I, that. I, I might be biased, but I think that top three should grandfather me in. <laughs> 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 here's what you do you get online and you get on the email and you start emailing dan at uh the uh office the main mx sports offices and telling him that you're wanting to go ahead and get that reserved and uh this that and the other and <laughs> i shouldn't be telling you that because probably right now dalton's listening he's like oh man i'm on that <laughs> no rodney rodney you and me are buddies and everyone knows you so you just got to put in the good word all right, man, but we'll keep that on the down. <laughs> I don't want I don't want to be blamed if you don't get it. If you do get it, I can tell you right now, Dan Dan's probably not my biggest fan. I'm or I'm not a he's not a big fan of mine, I should say. So you might not you might be buddying up with the wrong person here, because Dan and I kind of clash heads. 
Darn it. But uh, no, actually, uh, we we get along well, and uh, I don't want to get in the middle of that one. But I, I'll wish you good luck. I guess it'll probably come down to who uh, signs up first in the AMA Pro ATV class. Whenever it all boils down to it, huh? Yeah, like I said, I I hope I can can lose the flash. But either way, uh, whether I'll put it this way: whether it's the twenty five or the twenty five flash, you're going to see it in the front of. Pro Am Unlimited and Pro Am Production in 2013. Wow. So. There you go. So make no bones about it. That's going to be Cody Jansen, not Dalton Milliken, out on the number 25 out front, then, right? Yeah. You'll, be, uh, you'll see me putting in a good effort. And <laughs> I hope that Milliken makes his 25 or 25 slash look good. <laughs> hope but, he makes uh, his 25 hope, slash look good. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> hopefully mine's ahead of his. There you go. It'll be good racing, no doubt about it. Your your take on the next season, man. I mean, who's moving up? Who have you heard's moving up, and who's sticking around? Well, I, and I don't really know what Gibson's doing. I think uh, it's kind of rumored that he's moving up. Um, obviously, I think uh, we heard last week that Kyle Fix is going to stay put. Mm-hmm. Um, I would presume that Martin is going to stay put. I would think. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we, I think we know that. Obviously, uh, Hamrick's going to kind of try the pro thing here and there, but he's definitely going to be in prime production. So, obviously, he's going to be strong. Um, we saw Music do good there at the end of the year. So, I think uh, we're definitely going to have a good crop of guys. Obviously, Moser is tough week in mm-hmm. and week out. So it's you know it's really going to be uh, it's going to be consistency I think more than anything because that top top level guy like Gibson you know presumably isn't going to be there so more than anything it's going to be the guy that can kind of step into his mm-hmm. I should follow in his footsteps I should say and you know hopefully have at least one of the guys fighting for that spot. There you go. You know, one guy, I, I'm going to make a call out here, and I don't know if he's going to make it to the Nationals next year, but Ronnie Higgerson, he's out from the, out in the Midwest, out in Illinois out there. You, you're familiar with him. Like you said, he passed you for third there in the uh, Pro-Am uh, class there, I think, at one point. Uh, but uh, uh, that guy right there, I don't think we've seen his full potential yet. No, I don't, I don't I got it either. We were, we were both at uh, – we were both at Waldo um, training before the season last year, and um, I think me, him, and Hamrick, who were all at Waldo, have a very similar work ethic. You know, we were we all were putting our work in uh, day after day, where maybe some of the other guys were slacking a little or cheating a little. So I think uh, you know, one I've, I've raced him. I raced him in the A class, was kind of coming up, and. Um, we all know how naturally talented he is, but he also has a strong work ethic, which, as we all know, is kind of what makes or breaks a, a rider or an athlete in any sport. Yep, for sure. And I I got a little information. Let's hear it. Ronnie Hagerson, Ronnie Hagerson will be at the Nationals because Ronnie Hagerson has purchased Alpha Shocks from Jansen Motorsports for one bike, and he's got another set coming, and Ronnie Hagerson is going to be at all the Nationals this year, and I wouldn't be surprised if you saw him sticking his nose in the pro class. Wow. Yeah, that is so great news. Wide, wide open. That is great That's news. great news right there. That is great news, Joel. That is great news to hear. That is that, that is awesome. So, uh, Wow. That that that's good, and Ronnie Ronnie's got some potential. I've seen him race the uh, pro class before, so uh, you know that boy. You know if he puts it together, man, he's. I'm telling you, man, it's going to be another year of on fire as far as that pro am uh, class is concerned, and I'm I'm really excited what the future holds for that in 2013, to say the least. And uh, as we get uh, close to the end of the uh, night here, I guess uh, we can start wrapping things up. And, uh, Joel, uh, we'll switch back over to you for a few moments and give you a chance, and then we'll be back with you again here in just a second, Cody. But, uh, man, I mean, just from the sounds of things, uh, you guys, as a father-son duo, as a uh, team, 
as uh, however you want to put it, as a family. I think your entire family probably puts a lot of effort into the program that's going on right now. I mean, there's a bright future that looks uh, ahead for everybody here. I mean, from a business standpoint and from a uh, racing standpoint. Yes. Um, the, uh, make this as short as I can, but Cody Jansen is the best friend I've ever had since my dad passed away. My dad was my best friend. Cody's my now my best friend. And we have some of the guys that work on our team that come that are at the shop and then some of them that come to the track are not guys that I shake hands with or say how's it going buddy. It's guys that I give hugs to. It's guys that give me goosebumps like Ronnie Higerson coming back racing and racing hard or guys like Tyler Hamrick and the camaraderie that we have in the Pro-Am class with us dads hugging and saying, hey, we just want everybody to be safe. You know, Doug Lloyd and his dad, just great, great people. And, you know, I could go down the whole list of names that you listed, and we don't have one enemy of any of those dads, any of those, that the riders were all the camaraderie. It's just fantastic. Um, I got to throw a couple shout-outs quick to FSI, and the Hill family for taking us underneath their wing because we're now, they've become family to us. Troy and Cody are like brothers. Jimmy Sims is a, is a Hill in the, in the mix, and that's Troy's older brother. And that, that group has, we're going to be, it's going to be great. It's, you know, I got goosebumps talking about this. I don't know. Uh, and then with what Elka suspension, um, with Elka suspension, with Mark and Jan and Martin and Py, you know, not to get into too depth, but the suspension, the chassis set up on these bikes is so critical. It doesn't matter if you're making 55 horsepower or 65 horsepower. If that thing handles, it handles. And with Elka's suspension uh, help and our new suspension components, it's just. We're, we are really amped. We're going down to Florida for Christmas. We're at, right after Christmas, we're going to head down to Florida. We're going to bring Jeremiah Jones down. Jeremiah's kind of been t- treated Cody, you know, just exceptionally. And Jeremiah, as you know, is such a stand-up guy and stand-up guy. It's amazing. And now that we've opened the door last year, to be able to ride with guys like Tyler Hamrick or guys like Kyle Fix or guys like Ronnie Hagerson or go to Jeremiah's and then and then get this chance with the Hill family and you know and we're we're working out some other deals right now. We might have an opportunity to do some stuff with Andrew Boyd and there's some other people that are looking at us. It's it's just it's almost hard to contain myself. Um, you can probably hear it in my voice that mm. we are just jacked as what the potential is for Cody Jansen, the people that we help out. You know, we, we plan on winning this year the 70, the 90, the 150, the 300, the 400, and hope Cody Jansen can win one of the 450 classes. We'll have them all covered. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That really is awesome. That's uh that's uh, I'm proud of uh, I'm proud of you, man, to be able to live that dream and to be able to I I I got a tear in my eye and I, I felt really um, touched whenever you talked about how uh, Cody was your uh, your best friend. I think that's that that's that's very special, and I think that you guys have something something special going on there. And I hope the best for you, and I hope it continues to be that way from uh, for every day forward after this and. Uh, uh, Cody, I don't know if you realize how special things are right now, but I'm sure one day when you have kids of your own, you you probably will. But even if you don't realize the magnitude of it, you sense it, I'm sure, right now. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and, you know, that's, a, that's definitely uh, a two-way street because he's always been my best friend. You know, I, uh, I've never drank or used any sort of drug or anything in my life, and you know, when you're growing up and all your friends when you're in high school and college like I am now and stuff, that's what all your buddies are doing. So with the exception of, uh, you know, a couple of friends and, you know, 
my girlfriend maybe and uh you know my dad it's uh you know those are the guys that I hang out with and being that all my friends are from states away because those are at, those guys are at the races those are my racing buddies you know my my dad's my best friend I tell him everything and um I think it's true when people say I'm kind of a mirror image of him because he definitely made me who I am 100 percent well, it's definitely not a bad image to be, that's for sure. And uh, you are certainly your own. And uh, w- with that, I mean, uh, before we go, man, what, what is it that you'd like to leave here and, and let folks know about you and, and and your whole efforts, your family, and yourself personally? I mean, w- in a nutshell, man, give us your parting shots, I, I guess. Just, no, I just, I, I hope that... Uh, you know, people can see the hard work I'm putting in and uh, see how I try to, you know, pay all my dues and help out, uh, you know, the, the kids at the racetrack and, uh, you know, any other riders on the first one to go help someone out or, or talk to them or help them with setup or, or help them with lane choice or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, I'm just trying to be the best, not only the best rider, but I'm trying to be the best person that I can be. And, uh, you know, a lot of that, like, like I just said, comes from my dad and, uh, I'm trying to set myself up to be successful, you know, with, uh, you know, I have a phenomenal trainer, I have a phenomenal team, I have phenomenal family. Um, you know, I just have phenomenal people around me. And like my dad said, uh, with the Hills and FSI coming on, there's not a better group of people that I could surround myself with, uh, for the 2013 season. And I think people are going to be able to sit back and really, uh, really see me succeed because of that. And I hope that at the end of the day, at the end of the weekend, people aren't saying, wow, Cody Jansen was hauling today. I hope they say that too. But then I hope after that there's a, there's an asterisk or a note that says, uh, you know, and, he really went out of his way to touching or he went out of his way to, uh, you know, to help out my son or my daughter or, you know, whatever. And I just hope, uh, and I hope people are talking about how fast I am, but I also hope people are talking about, you know, what kind of guy I am. And, uh, I'm trying to not only leave my image on the track, but I'm trying to make an image being, uh, you know, being the, the good guy at the racetrack too. So, I hope that's what people can take away from it. Well, I think that they're gonna they're gonna do that quite easily. To be honest with you, you're uh, uh, quite a spectacular young person, a young man. Joel, congratulations on uh, uh, beating the odds, man. <laughs> I mean, really. And I think you know what I'm talking about. I do. Thank you very much. Yeah. I got one thing to say. We were the outlaws. We are the outlaws, and we will always be the outlaws. Cody and I together. <laughs> well, that'll do it, man. <laughs> that 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 will be the last words, man. And I think it couldn't be any simpler and better than that from the uh, from the Jansons this evening for uh, Cody and Joel Jansen. I'm Rodney Tomlin. This is a great Quad Radio tonight. I tell you, thanks a lot. This is Quad Radio Live.